Section 3, Build Trading Algorithm. In this video lecture on introducing online algorithms, we discuss one of the important concepts in almost every digital system dealing with financial data and machine learning as well. This is one of the concepts that you encounter in most of the cloud computing centers and also in the terms of distributed computing. So it might be helpful for you. So stay tuned and see you in the next slide. The lecture is divided into four subsections, all under the umbrella of online algorithms. First, we discuss one of the peculiar algorithms in the family of online algorithms called one pass algorithm. And then we see how this can be applied to linear regression. Finally, we discuss what are the available tools in our ML library scikit-learn. And I will refer you to a reference for more details about this topic at the end. Online algorithms, which is sometimes called streaming algorithms, are handy for such tasks that require real-time updates in affordable time. One of the common algorithms in the family of online algorithms is the one-pass algorithm, which is a streaming algorithm that works by receiving new inputs and matching them to existing clusters. If no clusters exist at the beginning, then the value becomes the representation of a new cluster. If a cluster exists, then the matching function is triggered and the new value is compared against the representation of each cluster. And finally, if a match is found, the new value will be assigned to this cluster and trigger a recomputation of the representation for that cluster. Otherwise, the new value is assigned to a new cluster and becomes its own representation. Such a technique is useful in algorithmic trading in many scenarios. Here we list three of them. Computing the mean, the variance, or even doing regression analysis. This new model which we are learning now is similar to ordinary linear regression, but again gives more importance according to an exponential weighting to recent observations than to older observations. In the standard of line approach to linear regression, the parameters are calibrated after all the data points are observed. On the contrary, for one pass algorithm to calculate the exponentially weighted linear regression, the equations must be rewritten in a recursive way. The most recent data points are given higher weights than older observations. The algorithm can wait for a period of time usually named burn-in time or burn-in period. This allows sufficient observations to accumulate so that the result is reliable. The importance of newer values is controlled by a parameter alpha, which is to be set by the algorithm designer. The goal of this approach, as usual, is to achieve faster computation and less memory usage when applying it to HFT, or high frequency trading. The method for solving exponentially weighted linear regression is often named recursive least squares, compared to the ordinary least squares. So let's have a deeper look at the equations and find out that they are simpler than they seem to be. So the first equation, y equals x beta plus epsilon, this is the normal line equation, where the response y is controlled by the independent variable x and some coefficients, called beta in this example. The epsilon parameter is quite a new thing in this lecture, which is a noise parameter assumed to follow a normal Gaussian distribution. Remember from section 2 that we always had this idea of noise, variance, and bias. This idea is quite inherent in almost every statistical model we are going to use, so get accustomed to it. The next equation is more concerned with beta, and beta here is reformulated in terms of linear algebra into two matrices, M and V. The negative one is just the notation accustomed in linear algebra, meaning that this is a dot product and this matrix M is transposed and multiplied by the other matrix V. The third and the fourth equations are very similar and these are the core of the recursive formula that is applied in this section. The idea is that to find out the M matrix at time T, we don't have to do recalculations of all the period or the interval before T, that is T minus 1. We just give them a lower weight, alpha. This weight, which is often found experimentally or empirically, controls the importance of recent values related to older values. 
So m at time t equals alpha m t minus 1. That makes sense. So how do we append the new values that have just arrived? So the values that have just arrived are the x t and the y t. Simply we do the same. We do a dot product x t transpose by x t. And then for finding the matrix V, we do that differently. We do x t transpose by y t. Since alpha ranges between 0 and 1, so the importance given to the older values is alpha, then it makes sense that the importance given to the newer values is 1 minus alpha. So now that we have done some approximations to the coefficients beta, we can use that to calculate the error function or the recursive least squares function. Two differences we can notice from the last equation, SSE equals the summation between j equals 0 to time t, is that here they are having the importance or the exponential weighting coefficient alpha, which is multiplied or risen to the power t minus j. So when j equals 0, the exponent will be t, and that will result in a lower value, and then when j equals t, the exponent will be 1, and this way you are getting the complete error without any fractions because alpha power t minus t equals alpha power 0 equals 1. That gives the highest weight to the last variables to be calculated. And here we have just done something differently that instead of saying x dot product beta, we have divided beta or split it into two values beta node plus beta 1 multiplied by x which stands for the slope and the intercept, very similar to what we have learned in the last section, a simple line equation. Well, scikit-learn is considered one of the most comprehensive and common and often used libraries in the world of ML. Regards of using it for regression or classification, you will find it useful having a consistent API. The convention or the naming by which the online algorithms go by under scikit-learn is called out-of-core learning. That means you are using multiple cores or just outside the memory. Whatever what this means, they have divided it into three categories. Streaming instance, feature extraction, and incremental learning. First, let's talk about streaming instances. This is more concerned with the reading data from streams such as files, APIs, and how to read that using multiple instances. And this is quite a problematic when dealing with data sets in order of 10 or more gigabytes in size. You'll find that under the streaming instance part. Second, it concerned with feature extraction, especially when working with text and other variables that has to be all read first before applying the algorithm. Last, we talk about incremental learning, and this is can be done using scikit-learn with a partial fit function. Remember that we use the fit method to do the training, and then we use the predict and test and evaluate methods. But for this incremental learning, we use a function usually named or always named partial fit. This way, the learning is done in an incremental way, very similar to online algorithms.